In this video we're going to look at the basics of uh, simplifying radicals and we could look at the easiest type of radical that you could simplify. We'll just start with square roots and there's some square roots that come out pretty nice like the square root of 1 which is 1 and the square root of 4 which is 2. So the first thing you'd want to be able to do is generate a list all the way down. Well, what's the next nice one? The square root of 9 is 3. So what we're doing here is we're looking at our perfect squares. 1 is a perfect square because 1 squared is 1. 4 is a perfect square because 2 squared is 4. 9 is 3 squared, etc. So the next one is 4 squared, which is 16. The square root of 16 is 4 might be a good exercise to pause the video here and generate these up to um, 10. We're going to be using these to simplify square roots that um, do not necessarily come out nice. So when I say nice, I mean a whole number. Let's see, square root of 64 is 8, square root of 81 is 9. Obviously I could keep doing this forever and ever, but um, that would make for a very long video, so we'll stop at 10. And you could keep going. Okay, so these square roots represent the perfect squares. So if you take a square root of a perfect square, you're going to get a whole number. All right, so if I have something like, um, oh, let's say the square root of 50, well, that's not a perfect square. I could estimate the square root of 50 is going to be very close to the square root of 49. So if I wanted in a decimal form, I could estimate that's going to be a little bit more than 7, say 7.1. I could certainly pull out the calculator and punch it in and see what it is. Let's go to a simple calculator here. We could do uh, 50 square root, and that comes out to be 7.07 blah 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 forever. It's an irrational number. There are some cases, though, where we want to simplify this square root and keep it uh, in its exact value. The minute we put it in a decimal, we're estimating because it's an irrational number. So that's where this simplifying radicals comes in. So what we want to do is we want to use a rule that says the square root of a times b is the same as the square root of a times the square root of b. So this allows us to break up a square root. For example, 50 could be written as something times something. So let's see, what multiplies to be 50? Well, we could do 5 times 10, 1 times 50, uh, 2 times 25. So we've got some options here. 1 times 50 doesn't really do anything, so let's forget about that. So what we want to do is we want to find the option that has a perfect square um, as a factor. So we got 5, 10, 2, 25. Any of those numbers perfect squares? Look over here at your list. Bingo, right here. The square root of 25 is 5. So what we want to do is we want to think of 50 as 25 times 2. So why are we doing that? Because we can use this rule and we can split apart these square roots now. So square root of 25 and square root of 2. Now we have the square root of 25, which is in our list of nice square roots, and we can simplify that. The square root of 25 is 5, and the 2, he is going to stay there, okay? The 2's the got to stay underneath the square root. So we simplified the square root of 50 to 5 square roots of 2. Let's look at the calculator. If we do 5 times the square root of 2, it should come out to be 7.1. It should come out to be the same. We're not changing the value. We're just changing how it's expressed. So let's take uh, the square root of 2 and times that by 5 equals, we still get 7.07. .07. Same thing we would get if we did 50 square root, 7.07. .07. And you could check your answer. Um, it doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect because it's possible this could be simplified more. Not in this case. The 2 cannot be broken down anymore. But if you were doing a problem, you could use your calculator and you could check your decimals. They better come out to be the same. If they're not the same, you've messed up somewhere. All right? Because it has to have the same value. We're not changing the value. We're just changing how it looks. The keys here then are to, well, before I erase that, the keys here are to find factors 
of your number, which is underneath the radical, it's called the radicand, find factors of the radicand that, so that one of them is a perfect square. They don't have to both be perfect squares. You're just trying to find a perfect square factor. All right, let's, uh, let's try another one. How about the square root of, oh, how about 12? All right, maybe you want to pause the video and give this a try. See if you can make it work. All right, so if you just go through your list, these are the numbers you're looking at. And one's not really going to do anything, so you can kind of skip that. Here's your first perfect square, which is 4. Does 4 go into 12? Yes, it does. So I'm going to break this up into 4 times 3, because 12 is 4 times 3. Then I can use my rule to split apart my radicals. Radical 4 times radical 3. Square root of 4 is 2. And then that 3 just stays in there because he can't be simplified. Let's check it on the calculator. Now this, like I said, this isn't always going to guarantee that it's perfect, but um, it's a pretty good check. So square root of 12 is about 3.5, 3.46. So now if I do 2 times the square root of 3, I'll put the square root of 3 in first, and then times it by 2 and I get 3.46, same value, just expressed differently. All right, let's try one more of these. How about, let's do the square root of, let's try a tougher one here, like 288. Let's try that one. Okay, so 288, well, you know, maybe I'm not sure what goes into 288. But remember, what you're checking for are these numbers over here. I don't really care if 2 goes into 288 because 2 is not a perfect square. I want to be able to split this apart, and I'll skip, I'll skip a step. I'll skip this step right here. I want to be able to split these apart. Something times something gives me 288, and I want one of these numbers to be a perfect square. So... I'm going to check for 4. 4 looks like it might go into 288. You could also check for 36 or anything else you think might go into 288. But, you know, checking for 2 is really not going to do you much good. So let's check for 4 and see if that goes in. So 4 goes in there 7 times and then um, 2, 72. So 4 times 72, that's going to work. Okay, so we'll do 4 times 72. So 4 is, a, is square root of 4 is 2. Now I have square root of 72. Well, 72, a lot of stuff goes into 72. We could probably break this down further. You have to keep going until what's underneath this square root right here um, cannot be broken down into a perfect square factor. So does 4 or 9 or 16 or 25 or 36 go into 72? Now, Actually, a lot of these numbers <laughs> go into 72. Um, <clears throat> 4 goes into 72. 9 goes into 72. 36 goes into 72. So which one do you use? If you use the biggest one, you'll get done faster. You could use any of them you want, um, but it might take you more steps. And I'll show you that. So let's do the fastest way. We'll call this... Um, option one here for the fastest way break this up if I break the 72 down into 36 times 2 and then split that apart square root of 36 times the square root of 2 so the square root of 36 is 6 and then I still have to times that by the 2 that was already out here so that gives me 12 square root 2 and that would be as far as you could go, because what's underneath the square root there, the 2, cannot be broken down anymore. You're done. Actually, I'm kind of out of room over here, so let me go up here. And starting from there, I want to show you what would happen if you somehow you know, didn't notice that 36 went into 72. Maybe you thought, oh, 72 is 9 times 8. So you broke it down to 9 times 8. That'd be fine. 
So the square root of 9, and you could start skipping some of these steps here maybe if you get the hang of it, but I'm going to go ahead and write them out. So the square root of 9, and you can break that down. See, I would probably skip this step and just put a 3 there. But So 2 times 3, square root of 9 is 3. The 8 is still underneath the square root, so he just stays there. So now I have 6 square root of 8. All right, but what about 8? Are there any of these numbers that go into 8? Yeah, 4 goes into 8, so I could break that 8 to 4 times 2. Then the square root of 4, I'm going to skip a step here, see if you can, eventually when you kind of see how this goes, you can skip these steps. So you, you're going to take the square root of 4, that's going to that's gonna come out, it's not going to be a 4 anymore, because you're going to take the square root of it. So the 6 is going to come down, the square root of 4 is 2, we put a times there, the square root of 4 is 2, and then this 2 right here is going to stay underneath the square root. So you have 6 times 2 is 12, square root of 2, same exact answer as I got right there. The difference is I was it took me more steps. The larger number you can find that goes into your radicand, the faster you're going to be done. But, you know, if you can't find a big huge factor, that's fine. Just find anything. If you can find any of these numbers, 4, 9, 16, that go into your radicand, you're going to get there eventually. And after a step or two, your numbers are going to get smaller and it's going to get easier. So just try to find one. All right, I would like to look at um, a similar problem here, except if it's a cubed root. What if we have a cubed root instead of a square root? That's going to change it just a tad. Now this rule actually will work for any index. So it might not be a, just a square root. It could be any root, any nth root, the third root, cubed root, fourth root, whatever. You can break that apart, and it will keep the same index like that. All right. So let's say we have um, a cubed root of 24. Well, these square roots now don't do us any good. What we need are our perfect cubed roots. And there's really only about three of these that come up over and over again. Um, the cubed root of 1 is 1. That doesn't really help us that much, but I just thought I'd throw it in there since it's the first perfect cube. What's the next one going to be that comes out to be 2? The cubed root of what is 2? Well, it's going to be 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2, which is... 8. So remember, cubed root of 8 means what times itself 3 times is 8, or what to the third power is 8, and the answer is 2. Whereas square roots means what squared is 9, or whatever's underneath there. All right, what's the next one? What times itself 3 times? All right, so what would go under there? 3 to the third power is 27. And then the next one is going to be 4 to the third power, which is 64. These are really the ones that come up over and over again. And actually, if you memorize these two or kind of got those, you know, where they were very familiar to you, you'd be able to solve most all of your cubed root type problems that you're going to see. But understanding how to come up with them is pretty important, too. Let's put, let's put one more in there. Cubed root of, this one comes up sometimes, 5 is 125. Cubed root of 125. And then sometimes cubed root of 1,000, that, that's 10. Sometimes you'll see that a lot because it's sort of easy to see. I'll show you an example of that. So let's look at our cubed root of 24. If we want to break this down now, we want to break this down into two separate cubed roots. Something times something is 24, and we want to be one of these numbers. So does 8 go into 24? Does 27 go into 24? Well, these get big really fast. Obviously, 27 is not going to go into 24. It's too big. So 8 is the only thing we can check, and yes, 8 goes into 24. So 8 times what is 24? That's 3. That's why i got to put a 3 there. These two things have to multiply to be 24. I guess I could have taken one more step and wrote it like this before I split it up. Okay, 24 is 8 times 3, and then you split it up into your two different radicals, so you can simplify the nice one. The cubed root of 8 is 2, and then the cubed root of 3 is just going to stay cubed root of 3. So that stays like that. 
why don't you try the cubed root of 5,000? Now look at your list. I know that seems like it's a big, huge number, but look at this list. All you care about is do one of these numbers go into 5,000? All right, well, 1,000 goes into 5,000. So I could think of this 5,000 as 1,000 times 5. That's 5,000. Then I'll split it apart. So I have the cubed root. Let me rewrite that cubed root. That got a little sloppy. So I have the cubed root. That's not that much better. Of 1,000 times the cube, there we go, cubed root of 5, and the cubed root of 1,000 is, what to the third power is 1,000? 10. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And then you have just your cubed root of 5, so 10 times the cubed root of 5. Once, once it gets below 8, you're done. I mean, because 8's the smallest perfect cube we have. So we don't even have to worry about it. There we go. All right, well, I hope this helps a little bit, and this would be the strategy you would use no matter what the index is here. If it was to the fourth power, you'd have to find a, something that was to the fourth power that was a factor. You really don't see that too much. I mean, if you can, if you understand how it works and um, you got your square roots and your cubed roots down, you're going you're gonna to have 95% of all problems you're going to see handled. Big thing is to be comfortable finding these factors and memorizing what are the perfect squares and what are the perfect cubes. That's going to get you a long way.